Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was pretty awesome. Go see it. Now this was a massive improvement of the original in a lot of ways, mostly in the story department. Now I feel some people will disagree with me even though that doesn't make sense because you know that I'm right, but the film's first plot and story has been written a gazillion times and was very generic and predictable. Look I'm sorry, but honestly, the first one leaned heavily on its presentation, its style, and its personality to carry it through, which it did, but this one elevates those elements into a script that wants to explore the concepts it introduces from the original. With the first film, we're just sort of waiting for the part in the teaser trailer where he jumps off the building in his new costume. Now, I always thought that the multiple universes of different Spider-Man was kind of ridiculous and silly, and it just felt like a how do we do a Miles Morales movie without making it like every single Spider-Man story ever. But what they do improve upon is what it means for Miles to be canonically or not canonically relevant or impactful. And I won't go there because of the spoilers and it's pretty awesome and pretty meta how they did it. But it questions Miles' role and what these ideas implies and it was a good way to play with this really, really silly concept. Now, if you can get past how the characters magically make assumptions about what changes will affect how the plot progresses and that ending up being the case, then you can probably appreciate the execution and what it does for its characters. Like I said, it's a silly concept anyway, but the execution really gives the experience and the consequences some weight that I felt the original lacked. The film is beautifully directed all the way through and through. There are some fantastic sequences that show gorgeous cinematography that looks like computer wallpaper material. The variations of animation coming together in pivotal scenes was phenomenal. One of my favorite scenes was an exchange between Miles and Spider-Punk, who was of a different animation and frame rate type, and seeing them in the same shots constantly moving was just so impressive to me. The voice acting from everyone was pretty great, with Haley Steinfeld being the standout character in voice performance. The soundtrack was much, much better, and even though I don't like Metro Boomin because I think that he's very overrated as a producer, the soundtrack is utilized perfectly throughout the film. Tonally effective, really bringing such vibrancy to every scene that the characters are in. The film is paced perfectly, letting every single scene breathe and build. Not a single minute feels wasted or rushed. We get right into the action and you won't notice the two hour and 16 minute runtime as you're watching the movie. It's pretty much a roller coaster ride from start to finish. There's actually a set piece near the third act that is so good that I'd pay a ticket just to watch that scene again. It involves vertical freeways and that's all I'm gonna say because it's like I said, it's, it's so impressive. I really enjoyed seeing the variations of Spider-Mans and they all had their own distinct personalities with what limited screen time they had and it's nuances like that that really show real effort into creating such a personality for this film. It was satisfying seeing how Miles interacted with the numbers and numbers of them and it really energized the movie's tone. What I didn't expect is how well they utilized the villain. Without spoiling anything, they took a villain that was presented as a B-grade villain and elevated him to having a bigger impact on the story than you would expect, connecting him directly to Miles, and it's clear that he'll have an even bigger role in the second part with how well they built him up here. Now my biggest problem with this movie is just some of the dialogue exchanges. They weren't bad, but it's more so the dialogue exchanges feel constantly indistinctive and continuous without having any purpose for why that's the case. Moments that don't feel appropriate at the moment just kind of made me wince a bit, like did they really need to have dialogue here at this moment. I mean, this was frequent in the Lego movie too, but the Lego movie was a quirky comedy that was filled with jokes. But here, a slight tone down wouldn't help me take certain segments as seriously as the filmmakers wanted me to. I mean, that's a personal thing and I doubt that it will bother anyone else. And I wasn't really bothered by the cliffhanger ending either. I know some people would argue that this should have had a part one subtitle and maybe so, but I personally thought that the cliffhanger was satisfying because of how well and entertainingly structured that this one was. So yeah, it was a very very good movie and I definitely recommend seeing it. You don't really need to see the first one to enjoy this one but it does help but overall this is a four-star movie. Definitely check it out. All right peeps peace. <laughs>